Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one, we're going to be going into ECS, the Entity Component System in Unity. Um, there is a bit more to it than just the Entity Component System. There's the Job System. There's some more stuff that I haven't really looked into, but this is something that I um, want to show you because it's very good for increasing performance in your game. Uh, and also, it's a way of making your game as such. It's not just something you can add in. Well, no, it is, but the actual design methods are something that you should do from scratch and build up on, uh, up upon. But the chances are most people are already in their own projects, so or they want to add bits to it. So you can actually do what's called hybrid or like mixed uh, ECS, which means your game has some bits of this in places to improve performance. Now I knew about this for a while, but I've never actually used it in my own game until today, and I feel like it's a good top video topic to cover because um, I was looking at performance in my own game, and my computer runs the game fine, but the thing is, I was looking at um, the profiler to see, you know, what's what's taking a while, what's taking the most time in a frame to, you know, calculate. And if I go here, I've got the debugger, I've just paused it, or the profiler, sorry, I've paused it on a frame, and I'm noticing that it's taking about um, like 40 milliseconds on a lot of frames, and basically it's going below 60 FPS. Um, on a lot of frames. Keep in mind on this, going below 60 FPS is when it goes above the line. It like the the bigger the spike, the lower the FPS because it's all about lag spikes. And when you go into a pause frame, like I did in my um, profiler video, I see that um, 40. So out of the 44, um, no, sorry, out of the entire milliseconds for that frame, 44 of them were spent on this basically this function here there's a bit more about the enemy controller um over here but basically it's the um billboard ui now i'm going to do this in terms of my game but obviously you can apply it to your own game and i will get into that after i find the patreon so thanks to michael uh norwegian viking paul robinson fullborn and wesley for their donations on patreon if anyone else is able to or would like to help out then the link is in the description below um so what i was saying um Entity component system is a design where you have behavior in your code, in your script, uh, separated from the actual like data and variables and everything. And what you can do is you have um, the entity component system itself will store entities, so game objects basically, and it can loop through those and do the code itself. And it sounds, it's a bit hard to explain, but the re I'll give you my example and then you'll understand better. So in my scene, I have lots of grass. Now I've decided to go for texture grass rather than modeled grass because uh, textures are easier than um, meshes to render. And by meshes, obviously it's still a mesh, it's a quad, but um, like this quads only have, like if I, I don't know why it's not, let me go in here, uh, environment, um, grass. I don't know which one this is. It's not actually bringing up in it, but the point is, um, it'll have like a quad will have four vertices, or maybe it actually has, yeah, it should have four, four vertices uh, made up of two triangles. So, like a triangle, if I was looking at this straight on, there would be a triangle down up to there. So, this triangle, and also be one going down right there. So, it's made up a square of two triangles. And that's a lot easier than meshes to render. But I have a lot of this grass. And the thing about this grass is it rotates to face the player, so that wherever the player is looking, the grass will always rotate to face the right way. So if I'm looking in um, this direction, for example, as you see in the game view, the grass is all looking at me. And if I was to move, it would rotate. So I have a script on this grass. Now that script is nothing special. It's called billboard UI. And um, all billboards, oh, here's the actual, you can see the um, quad now. So billboard is just the term for making something kind of look flat on at the camera. Now, um, there is a way to do this for shaders, and I might end up switching that out if I manage to figure out, because personally, I'm um, not an expert with shaders, but obviously if it means uh, improved performance, performance, then I will go back and change it. But the point is, I have a script on all this grass called Billboard UI, and it's quite simple. And what it does is, it when it opens, I have to manually go into it. Um, Ignoring this commented out code, because that's to do with the entity component system, which I'll show you how to set up soon. Um, we get the player's camera uh, on main. Oh, well, no, sorry. We get the player's camera by, you know, accessing it through camera.main uh, on the start. 
and storing it. So we can cache it there, we'd have to get it in frame because that would make it a lot more, um, <laughs> a lot worse performance if I got it, if I had to go find every frame rather than caching it. And then every fixed update frame, we make sure we've still got the player camera and if we don't, we'll find it again. But otherwise we can just um, look at and then this is just a quick calculation to make it face, um, look straight on at the camera basically. And I can put that on any UI basically and it'll rotate to face the camera. So I do that on the player's health bars as well. Now, that's good and all, but the thing is this update, even though it's just something simple to rotate to face a player, I have it happening, as you see over here, 2,712 times apparently. Even though there's not that many pieces of grass, it still happens that many times, or at least there's this many calls going on in here. It also has the enemy's uh, health bars rotating to face a player, so it all adds up. And if I add more to the scene, it's going to, you know, get even more intensive. So I need a way to kind of handle that. And one way to handle that is to write logic for, you know, rotating and stuff. And then have one object, one, called well, the entity component system, manage it for everything that exists in the scene with the script. So I'm going to get into making that. So this will make it much better in terms of performance. Now I've already written out the code, so I'm just going to go through and uncomment it and explain. So let's just um, scrap this. Just what you need to do, I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the class there. Now, what you would do if you're doing mixed ECS is you would put your data inside here. So for example, if it was a class where you wanted a tweakable value, you would just have like, you know, a float there or a boolean or an integer or a string or whatever. But this is where the logic happens. So if I, um, I'll just uncomment the whole thing and then go through it one bit at a time. Actually, before I do that, I should probably show you how to set it up. So there's nothing difficult, you just need to go to Window, Package Manager, um, All, and go find Entities. It's quite simple, you just install Entities. Um, for you to be able to use it in your code, I think you have to close and reopen Visual Studio for it to recognize it as a you know being imported. But the point is, you just get Entities, and when you go to your code now, if you use, with the using statement, Unity.Entities, you can then have access to it. So what we've got here is we've got our class, which is empty, which just sits on the plate. Uh, it's, it's a mono behavior. It sits on the enemy and that, well, on the grass in this case or whatever it is. And then you have a public class and the name doesn't matter, but I guess it's good practice just to call it because um, it's, it's a component system. So I could call it billboard UI component system, but I'll get too long. So just billboard UI component, uh, billboard UI system. And this is just a class uh, from component system and component system is in part of the entities. Now, this component system is gonna handle um, what we do with all of the different, you know, pieces of grass or enemy health bars rotating, pieces of UI. So first of all, we're gonna make a struct and this struct holds what data we need to pass to the um, entity component system. So in my case, all I need to tell it is a transform. Now, me putting public transform, even though I'm not uh, manually assigning that anywhere. I'm not saying, oh, transform equals get component transform. What this will do is it will mean the transform component of this, the well, the game object that this uh, billboard UI is on. So for the specific ones, if I obviously go to like a particular piece of grass, the um, transform of that piece of grass is what this will use. So if you want any other data being passed in, you would put it here. So you might have a public float that gets passed in or whatever. You put other... Um, data now if you were having like data in here like you had a um like um you know public string name uh equals you know something whatever right if you had that the way you would pass it in is you would actually just say um like public billboard ui the and that would just pass in itself the reason why i don't pass it in is because there's nothing from it so you can it just would be a waste to pass it in um Anyway, so let's just keep that on one line to keep it neat. So keep in mind, this is a very basic example, obviously. I can go into more complex uses if you want in future videos. But after um, this, I have a private transform, camera transform, and that is simply just to cache the camera, you know, the player camera, because as I said, I, I had that cached already. I want to keep that cached. Um, now, um, there is a function called on start running, which is equivalent to um, just the start event in mono behaviors. So when we start running the system, the component system, we get the camera transform to be you know camera.main.transform and store that here. 
that's fine that's just getting it on the start and on update is the same as update but for the entity component system so rather than calling update on all these like 600 700 800 different objects and going through the updates and doing the same thing over and over and over again we just do it the logic once on the entity component system and we apply that logic to all of the the entities that want it basically um so uh, i just say make sure you know the camera transform isn't null because if it is null and we try and rotate it then obviously it's gonna give you errors so that's just avoid errors and if if uh, it is null which would i mean in my game technically that should never be the case there should always be a camera but maybe if you go between scenes because the entity component system doesn't stop running between scenes as far as i'm aware you might want to um you know get it again the next scene so as soon as the next scene loads it'll become null so we'll run this once get the camera again and we'll be good to go so this isn't inefficient getting the cameras transform because this else will only ever get called like once per scene start so it's fine now we get quaternion look rotation is the camera transforms rotation the reason why i cache that is because it's just one less thing to do because if i put it in this for each loop i'm gonna have to cache it or like store it every single time i um go through that loop but if i you know just store it here before the loop then i don't have to get it every time it just saves extra wasted you know power i guess or processing power so now we loop through all things now you can't you'd have to put var you could put for each component in components or whatever because it's a struct but the point is um we go through each thing in this list and then you write your code right so we have access now to anything in this struct so i have access to the transform of that particular piece of grass so what i can say is you know that particular piece of grass is transformed dot look at that particular thing yeah, i cal i do the calculation here i'm not going to go into that it's not part of the video necessarily um but the point is this is the entire logic for all of the things in this um this class here this uh component system and then uh i this is all i want basically this is all i want from anything that has the component on so I go to my uh, grass, so if I go to scenes, main menu, oh sorry, test scene, and I go to a piece of grass, you'll notice how it's the billboard UI script on. But the problem is this uh, won't do anything just yet, because the problem is it doesn't know that it's part of the entity system basically. So if I press play, all the grass will just be random rotations. Now you might like that look, but I feel like it looks better when it's all rotated the right way. So what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna add something which is already here from when i last tested it and tried it the game object entity now you just basically shove that on something which is used in the entity component system as an entity um and the system knows because this object has you know a billboard ui script which also happens to have a um because this class we wrote well i've gone off it um yeah because this class we wrote the billboard ui compo uh system takes in a um sorry is on the billboard ui we want to get everything with this entity on so i've put it on this one piece of grass so if i press apply and then we go to this piece of grass obviously it's a prefab so we've got it on all of them so now handily enough if we go to window analysis entity debugger and just dock that down here you'll notice how we have all those pieces of grass basically everything in the scene that has a um, that script on it is now here as an entity and you can view it i mean you can't really do much with it down here i don't think but the point is that is everything now one thing i forgot to do which i've just remembered now is i've done it on all the grass rotation but not on the uh health ui so technically if i go to this health bar it has billboard ui so i should add a game object entity to it um and press apply so if i go to this one over here as you see we've got free now and because of this enemy as well i need to add it onto here so that's just something i forgot to do so now all of these have been added on now as you can see they've been added at the end so now we've got 684 entities or 685 in total because we start from zero so now if i save this and go press play you'll notice how if i get into the game shouldn't have any errors the things are rotating correctly and if i go to the profiler notice how your your um performance is always lower when you're using the profiler anyway that's just a thing so if i scroll okay so now you'll notice that instead of being on the edge of 60 fps and slightly going lower than 60 fps and by lower than 60 fps i mean 
above the line because that's what it means it's actually going a constantly around 100 it's very rarely getting to that i mean it, obviously i've got a random spike there i don't know what it is but if i go to it i could find out um apparently there's just uh camera render i don't know but the point is if i look at this billboard system on like any of the frames notice how it has one call instead of like 700 2000 whatever how many thousands it had it has one call and if i go into it it just basically says the same thing i'm not going to go into that but um it took four milliseconds where when i first tested it it took about 60 milliseconds and when i was showing you earlier it was taking about 40 milliseconds but now it's taking four milliseconds every frame to do all the grass rotations and all of the health bar rotations so that's much much more efficient um and I'm not saying like that wasn't just one off frame where it happens to be that performance. That's what it's like always. Now, I'm actually quite convinced my FPS would be better if I uncapped it because uh, I, I actually have the FPS capped um, just for the sake of performance. So again, uh, all that energy consum consumption. If I go um, to my... I have something... Here, here we go. Target FPS. I, I don't know. Just put like 1,000... I know that's not going to give me a thousand FPS. It just means that um, the it's target. That just means the maximum, basically. So if I go put this uh, stats on, we're on three hundred FPS, and obviously that would even be that would be even higher if it was in a built version of the game. But this is only in the uh, editor, and as far as I'm aware, the actual profiler is running right now. But um, okay, apparently it's capped at sixty again. Um, because I've gone to this scene. I don't know, it's fine. But the point is, the FPS is definitely better, and it's taking less time per frame to do all this stuff. As you can see, it's nicely below the 60 line. Um, and because I've only fixed one system, obviously, if I, if I do this on other systems that there's lots of, then you increase the performance there. And it's good practice with new projects to use this design for everything, but I'm not exactly sure how you do it for an entire project, because I'm still used to using mono behaviors and game objects. So um, I will do some research into how to make like a fully like ECS project, like how to um, avoid mono behaviors altogether. And when I've like, you know, got to grips with all that, then I'll do another video on that. But I hope you understand this. And if you have things in your scene that have perhaps, you know, you've got tons of them or scripts all over the place that are doing the same job. Um, I mean, theoretically, every script is doing the same job because, you know, it's the same script. So you could just do this for everything that's the point it's it's a possibility you can use you can use it in every situation so i hope you take this away and you know maybe improve the performance of your game or you understand a new way of uh handling data you know and the logic separating logic from data so yeah um if you like this video then obviously leave a like and subscribe it mean a lot um but apart from that thanks for watching and goodbye